Many people are hesitant to open an account with Starlink without seeing how their app works first. The problem is, the only way to access the app is to have an account with them. If this is you and you'd like to see how the Starlink app works on Android, then I'm going to show you in this video. Hi, I'm Tom and welcome to my channel where I focus on all things related to personal finance here in the UK. If that's something that you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. Starlink is one of the most well-known fintech or challenger banks who have recently entered the market using their technology to disrupt the banking sector. They've been around since 2014 and they have 1.8 million customers in the UK. And last week they came out with the news that they were the first challenger bank to break even. However, some people are still hesitant to give them a go. Some have concerns about security, but they shouldn't do. Starling is a fully fledged bank that has the same FSCS protection as your traditional high street banks. But there's another reason why a lot of people might be hesitant. Starling has no branches and relies on their app. So it's understandable that you'd want to see what the app actually looks like and how it works before you open an account with them. If you want to get a feel for the app before you actually apply, I'm going to walk you through all the different parts of it. Just before I begin, I want to point out that I'm going to be showing you the Android version of the app. The Android and the iOS versions look quite different. So if you've got an iPhone, I recommend you watch this video, which I'll also leave a link to it in the description down below. So without further ado, let's jump in and have a look at the app. So the first thing is you log in with your fingerprint as you would on any other modern banking app. And once you log in, the first thing that comes up is your home screen. Now, the first thing that I should say is if you've watched my cash envelope system video, I do say that I don't use this Starling app as my main bank account. I only use this bank account to put 50 pound a month aside to save up for my holidays. So you're not going to see many transactions in this account. And when we get to the spending section of the app, I'm going to jump into my joint account that has got a lot more spending so that I can show you what's going on. So the first thing that comes up is this dial. And I have to say, although I am a fan of minimalist designs in general, I'm not really a fan of the home screen of the Starling app. I feel like there's too little going on, which I'm more used to my Barclays account. I think they have a really good balance of showing you your accounts, but not having too much going on. So I feel like I'm not that much of a fan of the Starling Home app. So this first screen shows you what you've spent today. And what we'll do is it will categorize all your spending and shows you how much you've spent within each category today. And then if you do one swipe to the right, it does exactly the same thing, but it shows you all your spending for the month and it will categorize it. So now what we'll do is we'll click this green button in the bottom right. And this just brings up your transactions in a list format. So you can scroll down and see what transaction was made on what day. Now in the top right of the screen, you can see that there are three lines. And this is where the Android version of the app differs quite a lot from the iOS app. So if you've got an iPhone, yours will be quite different because you'll have a tray at the bottom that sort of displays the menu that us Android users have up here in the top left. So I'll click on the three lines. And what this does is this brings up the main Starling menu. So we've already gone through the home screen. So next we're going to have a look at the spending section. But instead of having a look here on my account where there's hardly any transactions, what we're going to do is we're going to jump in to my and my girlfriend's joint account where there are some actual transactions I can show you. So in Starling to jump between your different accounts, what you do is you click your little face in the top right corner. That brings up all your accounts and I select my joint account. Because we've actually spent some money in this account, I can show you that this sort of pie chart dial thing has been separated into our different spending. So one of them is for groceries and the other one is eating out. And we'll have a look at that in more detail. I'll click the three lines that brings up the main menu and click on spending. So on this screen, what they've done is they've got a really easy layout to understand. At the very top, you can swap between all your different months. And the good thing is, is it shows you exactly how much you spent in each month. Just a nice summary of the total you've spent, which is very useful. So I'll go back to November. So I can see I've spent £322.43 in November. And then you've got two toggles. One of them is for category. And what basically this will do is it will show you exactly how much you spent within each category. Now, again, if you've watched my cash envelope system, you'll know that I put aside 130 pounds a month for groceries and 40 pounds a month for eating out. And my girlfriend matches that. So in total, we've got 260 pounds for groceries and 80 pounds for eating out. So having a look here in our categories, 
In our groceries one, we can see that we've spent £257 in the month of November, which is very useful because we can very easily and clearly see that out of our £260 budget, we've got £3 left to last us until the end of November. Really clear, really easy to see. And in terms of eating out, we've got around £15 left for the rest of the month. And you can click into your different categories here, and we can see loads of ASDA transactions, and you can click in and have a look at each merchant. You can also click in and amend your categories if you need to. I'm not actually going to change the category because it is correct, but it's very easy to do. You can also add a note, and you can also add an attachment if you needed to add a receipt. So we'll just go back into the spending and then the next toggle is the one with the merchants. What it'll do here is it will group your merchants all together. So I can see that we've spent £137.60 at ASDA this month. I don't use this tab very much, but it, it might be useful for someone. Now going back onto the main menu, the next area that we need to go to is to the spaces menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into my personal account. So we'll go into spaces. And this is one of the really cool features about Starling. And Monzo has got this feature as well. And I feel like it's one of the things that really stood out when the fintech banks came around that made people want to swap to them. It's kind of these little cool little features that just make having an account that much more interesting and engaging. So what you can do is you can create a space. Now a space is just an area that you can put money from your main account into a separate area of your account so that you don't actually spend it or use it. So for example, as I use this account to save money for holidays, say I was saving for a holiday in Spain, I could call this space Spain and hit create. Now what I can do is if I click the little pen in the top right, I can add a photo, which is just a nice feature. It just makes the account feel just that little bit more personalized and I can create a target amount. So say my holiday to Spain was gonna be a thousand pounds. I can set my target amount in here and also I can choose to round up my spending. So say I spend 85p in, the, in a cafe, then what I can do is round that up to a pound and put that extra 15p towards my savings goal, which is a nice little touch and I'll hit save. Okay, so now we're back on the main screen of the space and we can see my target amount is in the bottom and it shows me a percentage, which shows me how close I am to getting to my target. So what I can do is I can click in the bottom where it says add money and it shows me my balance in, in the main account. So I can add a hundred pounds if I want to and it will show me how much that will take my main balance down to. So if I take a hundred pounds, it'll take my main balance down to 601 pounds and if I click the little pen here, I can choose if I want to do it that £100 transfer now as a one-off, or if I want to put, say, £100 a month away every month. So it does give you that option. So I'll just do a one-off £100 transfer, and I'll press Add. There we go. Now we can see that the percentage has changed to 10% because we've now got £100 in that space. So we know that we just need to put another £900 aside and then we'll be hitting our £1,000 target. So these spaces are just great for saving for little goals and I think it's a really nice touch having that percentage. It just gives you that extra motivation to try and reach that goal. The next item on the menu is the payments. And one very interesting part of this area is the scheduled payments area. And the reason I really like this is because this shows you all of your regular payments in one place. So for me, I like to always keep a note of all my direct debits and all my standing orders every month and see how much they all are. So having a screen like this where they group them all together is a very handy feature to have. And the next thing is the ad money. Now, some of this will be blurred out because there's sensitive information, but right here, I have got my account number and my sort code, and I can easily copy, if I click my sort code, you can see that it's copied it to the clipboard. So if I'm trying to input my details somewhere else, instead of flicking back and forth and trying to remember the details in, in one app and then try and quickly write them in another, all you have to do is copy, paste, then you know for sure that you've got the right details in the other app that you're trying to copy it to, which is very useful. The next thing we've got is switch to Starling. 
This is if you want to use the current account switching service. I don't really know why this is in the add money section. It's a little bit confusing and I'm not a big fan. Then we've got check deposit. This is a big one because it's obviously Starling, no branches. So people might be thinking, what do I do with things like checks? Well, all you have to do is you scan the check in the app and you can pay in that way. Super easy, super simple. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of this because I don't like having to go to the bank. If I can just get a check and scan it, then that's perfect. You can deposit cash in your Starling account at any post office. There's plenty of post offices everywhere for everyone to go to. So that is a very handy feature. So we'll jump back into the menu and we will go on to card. Now, again, there's gonna be a lot of information blurred out here because there is some sensitive card information because what I'm seeing right now is my long card number, my expiry date, and my three digit security code. So what this means is if I'm sitting upstairs and I want to buy something online and I don't happen to have my wallet on me, all I need to do, log into the app, I've got all my card details there, I can put them in, I don't even need to go downstairs to get my wallet. Really useful, really handy. The next thing we've got is the card lock and unlock feature, which if you were to lose your card and you want to lock it to stop anyone from using it, you can just do it from here in the app. You don't need to ring your bank or sit there on hold or have to wait to speak to anyone. You can just do it yourself, which is really good. Next feature is the online card payment code. So when you click view, if you're trying to buy something online and you need to get an authorization code to make sure that it's not fraudulent and that it's actually you making the purchase, then you just come here into the app, you get your code, and then that will authorize your payment. Next, we've got the card and currency controls. So this is where you can do things like stop your card from being used at an ATM. You can block your card on any gambling or casino sites or anything like that. This is basically just a section where you get maximum control over your card. The next one, cancel or replace card. Very self-explanatory. If you lose your card and you need to replace it, then this is the bit of the app that you would go into. You can get a pin reminder from within the app. All you need to do is enter your Starling password that you will have created when you opened your account and you'll be able to see your pin if you forget it. And lastly, we've got the card and payment limits. So in here, this is where you decide how much you want to be able to spend maximum throughout a day or how much you want to be able to withdraw from an ATM in any given day. So going back on the menu, the last one we have is the marketplace. Now the marketplace is, again, it's not a feature that I've actually used, but it's one of the things that Starling is really trying to push at the moment. What you can do is you can link your Starling account to loads of other providers, such as insurance or on their business accounts, they do uh, links to accounting software. And I feel like this is really an area that Starling is looking to grow and add more and more features. Although I don't use it now, I feel like this is something that could really develop into something interesting in the future. So there you go, that pretty much covers the whole Starling app. As you can see, it's pretty easy to use. I feel like there's some areas of the app that could still do with a tiny bit of streamlining and some little tweaks here and there just to make it a tiny little bit more user friendly. But it's definitely one of the best banking apps that I've used and it puts it light years ahead of some of your traditional high street banks. So if you liked what you see and you want to go through and actually apply, what do you have to do? Well, the process is actually very simple. It's just a case of downloading the app and then it will walk you through the application process, which took me around 10 minutes. You basically hold up your ID and it takes a video of your face, move your face from side to side. And basically what it will do is it will take the video and match it to your ID. Then if you're successful, you will receive your card in the post in three to five business days. It's a very easy process to do. It's very streamlined. I think this is one of the things that a lot of people like about fintech banks is that you can have an account open within minutes. It's not like the traditional high street banks where opening an account could take days or even weeks if you didn't manage to get yourself in for an appointment. Everything is done within an app on your phone. It's done in 10 minutes. So to conclude, I really like the Starling app. Although I don't use all the features and functionalities, I feel like the ones that I use the most and are most important to me, such as spaces, being able to categorize my spending and show me exactly how much I've spent within each category every month, I feel like they do those aspects very, very well. In the comments down below, let me know if you would like me to do a similar walkthrough of the Monzo app. And if you do, I'll go ahead and make that video. I can also make an in-depth review and comparison of Monzo and Starling as I've been with both banks for quite a long time now. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. 
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.